If you look at the flagship smartphone chipset industry in 2022, it was somewhat not very inspiring. While Apple has been constantly improving its Bionic chipset, last year Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 failed to impress as it had terrible thermal performance, although they did manage to turn things around with the updated A Plus Gen 1 later on that year by switching the production from Samsung to TSMC. On the other hand, MediaTek with its Dimensity 9000 chip looked pretty capable on paper, but the problem was it just did not make it to that many smartphones. But it looks like Android flagships could finally turn things around this year in 2023, as both Qualcomm and MediaTek's latest processor promises incredible performance alongside incredible power efficiency. So I really wanted to see just how well the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and the Dimensity 9200 compete against Apple's new A16 Bionic. Let's find out. But uh, before getting into benchmarks and stuff, I guess I should briefly go through their specs first. Uh, but if you don't need all those details and just want the numbers, you can just go ahead and skip this timestamp. Okay, starting with the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, it is manufactured under TSMC's 4NM process and it has quite an interesting CPU cluster. Its 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 CPU structure is mostly populated by 2nd gen ARM V9 cores, including one high performance Cortex X3, two mid tier Cortex A715, and three efficiency centric Cortex A510, while Qualcomm has also used two Cortex A710 cores based on the older ARM V9 architecture. With all this, Qualcomm promises a ridiculous 35% faster performance alongside 40% better power efficiency over the 8 Gen 1. As for GPU, the new Adreno 710 follows the same route with 25% faster performance and 45% more power savings. Moving on, MediaTek's Dimensity 9200 goes all in on the second gen ARM V9 with a single Cortex X3, three Cortex A715, and four Cortex A510 cores. And um, even though it's fabbed with a 4NM process too, MediaTek has actually used TSMC's second gen 4NM process called N4P instead of N4 that Qualcomm went with on the Gen 2. And according to TSMC, N4P is refined N4 node that manages roughly 6% better performance. However, unlike Qualcomm, MediaTek does not design its own GPUs though. But here, ARM's Immortalis G715 GPU on this chip is no joke either, managing 15% better energy efficiency than its predecessor and so much more. Then there's Apple's A16 Bionic. Unlike the competition, Apple is still sticking with the older ARM V8 architecture, but it is Apple's first 4NM chip built on TSMC's N4 process, just like the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. However, the A16 is not much of an upgrade over last year's A15 Bionic. It has a similar hexa-core CPU with two performance and two energy efficiency cores, but um, Apple says A16's high performance cores now use 20% less power. Similarly, its 5-core GPU features 50% higher memory bandwidth now, and Apple says that they should help with graphics-intensive games. But reading between the lines, we know that this is not that big of an upgrade. Anyway, uh, let's jump straight into the benchmarks now, shall we? For this test, I'm using the iQ11 with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, the Vivo X90 Pro with the Dimensity 9200, and the iPhone 14 Pro Max with the A16 Bionic. I've toggled the maximum performance mode on all three phones to eck out the absolute best performance from these chips. Starting with Geekbench, uh, we see that Apple continues to slay the competition in terms of CPU. With a towering single-core score of 1873, the A16 has a healthy lead by at least 26% compared to a Gen 2 or even 31% over the Dimensity 9200. When it comes to multi-core scores though, a Gen 2 and Dimensity 9200 aren't that far behind, but Apple still leads the chart. Now, Geekbench, well, it's a decent indicator of a system's raw CPU performance, but it does not necessarily tell us anything about the bigger picture. That's why we turn to Antutu for a more holistic view of a system's potential, and it's a complete 180 here. 
uh, both the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and Diamond City 9200 post significantly higher numbers versus the A16 Bionic. Our IQ 11 logged over 1.27 million in the first run, followed by Vivo X90 Pro's 1.2 million and over 932,000 from the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I knew the A16 Bionic was not going to be able to keep up in Antutu, but I was not expecting this big a gap between the three. I also ran the benchmark nine more times successively to see how much performance these chips lose under such moderate stress. And I am glad to see that all three of them have a fine sustained performance with the A16 Bionic once again coming in last by losing around 5% performance between the first and the tenth run. As for the temperature, the iPhone stayed the coolest with the front and the back of the phone getting as hot as 36 and 38 degrees Celsius, whereas the Diamond City 9200 powered Vivo X90 Pro got the hottest with a peak surface temperature of 42 degrees Celsius. To be fair, you can't do an apples to apples temperature comparison between these chips since the phones they're in have different cooling solutions and different power management profiles, but um, it's still a good point of reference to understand their thermal performance. Next up is the 3D Mark Wildlife Stress Test. This is a GPU intensive benchmark that renders the same high level graphics at 1440p 20 times in a row to examine a system's performance under stress. And the result I'm seeing is pretty surprising. A16 sits at the bottom of the table yet again, while Diamond City 9200 manages the most stable results despite its higher temperature. Sure, the A Gen 2 has the highest individual score, but it loses quite a chunk of performance in every consecutive loop. I also ran 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme test to check their power efficiency and it seems that Apple has lost the one crown it has held for so long. This time, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 delivers better GPU performance while drawing less power, whereas the Diamond City 9200 has the next best performance per watt. Okay, this might be an overkill, but I also put these processors through a couple of GFX bench graphics rendering benchmarks as well. From um, high-risk textures and motion blur to rendering HDR environments, these tests put full use of the GPUs to simulate how well it handles demanding modern-day games. And here, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 came out on top of all three tests, along with excellent stability in each run, but the phone got rather toasty in this case, hitting uh, 45 degrees Celsius at its peak. And the A16 Bionic finishes dead last one more time. Same thing with their power efficiency. First place Qualcomm, second place MediaTek, and third place Apple. I forgot to mention earlier, but um, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and the Diamond City 9200 support real-time hardware-based ray tracing too, unlike Apple's A16 Bionic. In case you didn't know, ray tracing is a graphics rendering technique that adds more realism to a game by producing accurate lighting and reflections. Anyway, I can't analyze the ray tracing ability of these chips since there is no mobile game with ray tracing support yet, but I did find a benchmark that could give us a rough idea. In uh, GPU scores in vitro test, the Diamond City 9200 absolutely blew the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 out of the water, netting a 27.5 average FPS over Qualcomm's pitiful 17.7 FPS. So based on all our GPU benchmarks so far, it's clear that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and the Diamond City 9200 are absolute forces to be reckoned with. And all that reflects perfectly when you're gaming as well. Even at the highest settings with HDR graphics and extreme frame rates, both the phones manage a steady 60fps gameplay on PUBG Mobile with decent temperatures. And uh, there aren't any significant frame drops or anything as you uh, put in more minutes into the game either. The iPhone 14 Pro Max produces similar results with a stable 59 FPS gameplay, but the one thing I notice is that it gets hotter by at least a couple of degrees in all the games I tested. It's nothing alarming to be honest because the iPhone tends to contain the heat mostly near the camera module only. That means the phone does not get uncomfortably hot throughout the chassis or anything like that. The next game I tested on these phones is Genshin Impact, which is one of the most resource-hungry mobile games out there. Uh, 
and while neither of them hit a steady 60 fps at the highest graphic settings um, they get pretty close as you can see from these graphs, the A16 Bionic has the most unstable FPS throughout with the sharpest spikes and drops dipping as low as 38 FPS. The A Gen 2 comes in second with relatively more stable gameplay while the Diamond City 9200 has even fewer frame drops at the expense of higher temperatures. However, a bunch of other games I tested like Apex Legends, Asphalt 9 and Injustice 2 is not optimized for the Diamond City 9200 yet, which um, is obviously nothing to do with the chip's performance or anything. Instead, uh, since most of these games are from Western developers and Diamond City 9200 has not made its way out of China yet, it's safe to assume that this is just a matter of optimization. Anyway, one of my favorite games, Mecarina, has just received an update to run at 120 FPS on the Diamond City 9200. Although the phone cannot maintain a steady 120 FPS and there are some notable frame drops a few minutes into the game. It's um, kind of the same with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, whereas the iPhone is still stuck at just 60 FPS here. So there you go, that was my comprehensive comparison of the three best smartphone chipsets in 2023. Apple had been comfortably enjoying the gold medal in the race for quite a few years, but this time the tables have turned quite dramatically, might I add. Yes, Apple's A16 Bionic CPU's performance remains unmatched, but as far as the GPU is concerned, Qualcomm and MediaTek have leaped past Apple in the most impressive fashion, with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 posting especially impressive results. Apple refusing to bring any remarkable upgrade to the A16 Bionic has paved a clear path for Android's victory and it's now up to Apple to catch up to the competition. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and the Diamond City 9200 even have a substantially improved power efficiency thanks to TSMC's 4NM process, so that's equally amazing. Now, the only other thing I hope for is for more and more Android OEMs to use the Diamond City 9200 on their phones and launch them in the international market. MediaTek has never been this competitive in the premium space before, so the Diamond City 9200 has a real chance of beating the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 in terms of better performance per dollar by appearing in aggressively priced flagship or semi-flagship smartphones in 2023. So guys, that was all for our very in-depth and elaborate comparison between the three best smartphone chipsets in 2023. We are hoping to bring uh, more of such content for you guys. So if you don't want to miss that, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and I will see you in my next video.